Let's begin with the first section of our today's lecture and in this we will talk about the uh, indications and contraindications of uh, direct laryngoscopy and then we will also talk about anesthesia used for the procedure and what should be the position of the patient when direct laryngosco laryngoscopy is being performed and also the procedure procedure or steps of the procedure we will discuss and also how we should manage the patient after the procedure and what are some different complications that can occur as a result of direct laryngoscopy. So direct laryngoscopy is direct visualization of larynx and hypopharynx. So this is the laryngoscope, you can see this is the larynx. So when there is direct visualization of the larynx and hypopharynx, as a result of the use of laryngoscope, then we can, it's known as direct laryngoscopy. Diagnostic indications of uh, direct laryngoscopy we have uh, when indirect uh, uh, laryngoscopy is not possible then we need to go for direct laryngoscopy. When indirect laryngoscopy has not been successful to find the extent of growth and to take a biopsy, direct laryngoscopy needs to be performed. To examine hidden areas of. So indirect laryngoscopy can be done and once the indirect laryngoscopy is not possible or when the it's not uh, indicated then we should go for direct laryngoscopy and it is also to find the extent of the disease and the growth and when biopsy needs to be done we should go for direct laryngoscopy and to examine in the hidden areas of um, hypopharynx, base of the tongue, uh, valliculi, and lower part of piriform fossa, larynx, uh, infrahyoid epiglottis, anterior commissure, ventricles, and subglottic region. So these are the indications for direct laryngoscopy to get the biopsy, to find out the extent of the growth, and to find the hidden areas present in the hypopharynx and larynx. In the hypopharynx, the base of the tongue, valliculi, and lower part of piriform fossa needs to be observed by direct laryngoscopy. And then infrahyoid epiglottis, anterior commissure, ventricles and subglottic region of the larynx needs to be examined. Therapeutic indications, we have removal. Why we need to do direct laryngoscopy? Therapeutic means for the therapy and for the treatment. When we should perform laryngoscopy, removal of benign lesions of larynx like papilloma, fibroma, vocal nodules, polyp or cyst, all these can be removed by direct laryngoscopy. Removal of foreign body from larynx and hypopharynx also need direct laryngoscopy. Dilation of laryngeal stricture. So if there are laryngeal strictures, strictures are narrowings, are present to dilate those strictures, we need to perform direct laryngoscopy. Some contraindications of uh, direct laryngoscopy, disease or injury of cervical spine because the 
procedure is being performed, the neck is slightly extended. If there is injury to the cervical spine, that's a very, very big no-no or a contraindication because we can aggravate the condition and it should be avoided. So injury of the spinal, uh, cervical spine. Moderate or markedly respiratory obstruction unless the airway has been provided by tracheostomy. So any airway obstruction is a contraindication unless there is tracheostomy present. Recent coronary occlusion or cardiac decompensation. Anesthesia which is used is general anesthesia preferred can be performed under local anesthesia. So general anesthesia is usually recommended but if not then it can be performed under local anesthesia. In infants and young children no anesthesia required. Position is uh, lies supine, head is elevated at by 10 to 15 centimeter. The elevation of the head by 10 to 15 centimeter. Neck is flexed on thorax. So neck is flexed on thorax. Head extended, neck flexed on thorax and head is extended on atlanto occipital joint, barking dog position. So you can see the head is extended. Procedure of uh, laryngoscopy, these are all the different laryngoscopes. A piece of uh, gauze placed on upper teeth to protect them against trauma. So during the procedure when laryngoscope is inserted, it's better to put the gauze piece so the injury to the teeth are affected, uh, protected. Laryngoscope lubricated with little autoclave liquid paraffin or jelly. So uh, lubrication of uh, laryngoscope is performed for easy access or entry. Lubrication is performed. So dry, it, it cause more pain and lubricated is easily, it pass through easy and it's uh, cause less pain and injury. Laryngoscope held by handle in left hand. So left hand, the laryngoscope is held. Right hand is used to retract lips and guide laryngoscope to handle suction and instrument. So left hand is used for the holding of uh, uh, laryngoscope and the right hand for opening or retracting the lips and for any suction or holding the instrument. So that's how the position of the laryngoscope or position of the uh, surgeon. Procedure, these are the areas you can see. This is the epiglottis, vocal cords, cartilage, and the trachea or the windpipe. So trachea, then we have vocal cords, epiglottis, and cartilage. Laryngoscope introduced by one side of a tongue which is pushed to opposite side till posterior third of tongue is reached. It is then moved to midline and lifted forward to bring the epiglottis in view. Laryngoscope now advanced behind epiglottis. You can see this is the epiglottis and lifted forward without levering it on the upper teeth or jaw to avoid any injury. 
This gives good view of the interior of the larynx. So laryngoscope enters into the larynx, passing different structures so we can see the larynx directly. That's direct laryngoscopy. Following structures are examined serially, step by step. Following structures are examined based of the tongue, as we proceed the laryngoscope, the examiner keep on examining different structures for any uh, abnormality that might be present. So base of the tongue, right and left velliculi, epiglottis, right and left piriform sinuses, every epiglottic folds, arytenoids, post cricoid region, both false cords, anterior and posterior commissure, right and left ventricles, right and left vocal cords. All these structures, you pass through them and the examiner can observe them. So we have base of the tongue, right and left valliculi, epiglottis then come, then we have eriepiglottic folds, erythinoids, post cricoid region, false cords, interior and posterior commissure, right and left ventricles, right and left vocal cords, and subglottic area. So all these structures are serially examined. Mobility of the vocal cords, these are the vocal cords. Mobility of should also be observed. A right angle tel telescope used to see under surface of vocal cord and wall of the subglottis. After the procedure is completed, different structures are examined. Laryngoscope is withdrawn and lips and teeth examined for any injury. So during insertion, we examine the structures and when we withdraw the laryngoscope, lips and teeth are also examined for any injury during the procedure. Post-operative care of the patient to prevent aspiration of blood or secretions, patients' respirations washed for any laryngeal spasm and cyanosis. Trauma to larynx, so all these should be included in post-operative care. If there is any trauma to the larynx during laryngoscopy, uh, patient respiration should be very carefully monitored uh, for any laryngeal uh, spasm and cyanosis, bluish discoloration of the skin. If the breathing is not adequate, then there is cyanosis or bluish discoloration of the skin due to lack of supply of oxygen that can occur as a result of respiratory uh, uh, abnormalities or failure. Bleeding may occur from operative site. Complications that can occur injury to the lips and tongue if they are nipped between the teeth and laryngoscope. Injury to teeth dislodged and fall into pharynx. If there is any injury to teeth, if they break down, if there are any uh, dentures present, they should be very carefully monitored, removed before the procedure. But if there is any injury during the procedure to the teeth and they fall down into the pharynx, they should be dislodged. Bleeding can occur as a complication. Laryngeal edema, swelling of the larynx, edema of the larynx due to handling by the laryngoscope can also occur. So that concludes the section one in which we talked about direct laryngoscopy, direct examination of the larynx, what are the indications, what are some contraindication and what's the procedure used for laryngoscopy. Thank you for watching scardia.com.